It's day 11 of the Israel-Hamas war, and the big headline is this. U.S. President Joe Biden is traveling to Israel. It's a rare and risky visit because American presidents do not visit war zones. Not when American soldiers are not fighting there. But Biden is doing just that. He will land in Tel Aviv on Wednesday. He will hold talks with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and then he will fly to Jordan. So what is Biden's mission in West Asia? What message is he trying to send? Biden's top diplomat, Antony Blinken, highlighted five goals. Listen to this. First, the president will reaffirm the United States' solidarity with Israel and our ironclad commitment to its security. Second, President Biden will underscore our crystal clear message to any actor, state or non-state, trying to take advantage of this crisis to attack Israel. Third, the president will continue to coordinate closely with our Israeli partners to the secure the release of hostages taken by Hamas. Fourth, President Biden will receive a comprehensive brief on Israel's war aims and strategy. Fifth, the president will hear from Israel how it will conduct its operations in a way that minimizes civilian casualties. Two of those stand out. One is to show support for Israel. Biden has not been the best of friends with Netanyahu, so this visit is his way of saying none of that matters. None of what happened in the past matters. America has Israel's back. And second, to send a message to Israel's enemies. Iran has been cranking up the rhetoric. They're threatening to unleash their proxies on Israel. So Biden's visit is about two main things, solidarity and resolve. He is putting 2,000 American soldiers on standby. The Pentagon calls it prepare to deploy. These 2,000 soldiers can enter the action in 24 hours. And what will they do? Well, they're not combat troops. Their job is not to join Israel's fight against Hamas. Their job is to support them. Things like advising, medical support, handling explosives and all of that. So it's symbolic and significant. It shows Washington is preparing for Israel's ground invasion of Gaza. They know it's coming, so they want to be ready. Biden's visit was set up after multiple rounds of diplomacy, and Antony Blinken was leading that effort. He returned to Israel on Monday after visiting Arab capitals. He held a marathon meeting with Prime Minister Netanyahu. It lasted for nearly eight hours, an eight-hour-long meeting. At one point, the talks were disrupted by air raid sirens. Both Netanyahu and Blinken were rushed into a bunker. Nonetheless, their talks continued. Reports say the focus was on the ground invasion. Now, just take a look at these pictures. These are from outside the Gaza border. Israel has amassed more tanks and equipment overnight. If they enter Gaza, it will be a bloodbath. And the Americans know this. If more Gazans die, the sentiments will change. The Arab countries could toughen their stance. Iran could plot attacks to the north. So Washington is hoping for damage control here. An invasion with limited casualties, that's their best hope. And how did they achieve that? With evacuations and air corridors. That's what Blinken discussed with Netanyahu. He later said Israel had agreed to a plan on delivering aid. He did not explain the plan, but on the ground there is some movement. Some 168 trucks are heading towards the Rafah crossing. We told you about this yesterday, the Rafah crossing. It is a crossing between Egypt and Gaza. And right now it's their only hope, the only way of getting aid into Gaza. Even if Rafah, but, but even Rafah is not off limits right now. Look at the scenes there this morning. Israeli rockets targeted the city. People there woke up to death and destruction. At 3.30 in the morning, we woke up and saw the whole area in ruins. Three missiles hit, two exploded, and one is still inside the building. We pulled out the remains of civilians. They were all civilians. There were no militants and nothing related to military activities. Our region is known for hosting civilians and poor people only. Look here and there. Around seven floors are gone. So the situation in Gaza is getting worse. Israel imposed a complete siege there last week. There is no water, power or food. Over the weekend, Israel had asked people to evacuate northern Gaza, but tens of thousands still remain. In Gaza City, for example, there are some 100,000 people, 1 lakh people. These are civilians, including children. Any moment could be their last, because the air raids continue. Israel struck multiple Hamas targets overnight. Buildings near the Jabalia refugee camp were targeted. 
People were seen digging through the rubble. Many survivors are trapped underneath and bodies too. Reports say around 1,000 dead bodies are buried under the rubble. There is no way to retrieve them. And remember, all this is before the ground offensive. You can imagine the toll once Israeli soldiers enter Gaza. Hence the focus on aid and evacuations. The West is hoping that Egypt and Jordan will take some refugees, but both these countries have refused. They will send aid, but they will not take people. The Jordanian king is in Berlin today. He met with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. He said West Asia is on the brink of the abyss. Meanwhile, Olaf Scholz issued a warning to Iran and Hezbollah. No refugees in Jordan, no refugees in Egypt. This is a situation of humanitarian dimension that has to be dealt inside of Gaza and, uh, and, and the West Bank, and not to try and push the Palestinian challenge and their future onto other people's shoulders. Once again, I expressly warn Hezbollah and Iran not to intervene in this conflict. Together with our allies, we as the federal government are doing everything in our power to ensure that this conflict does not escalate further. Scholz is planning a trip to Israel. He is expected to arrive sometime this week. His warning to Iran is a reminder of how bad things could get, how this could very much become a much bigger war. That's our next story.